glory to God. Well, this morning we're going to go back to the teaching we did on meditation. And we ended with meditation and how to meditate. And so I'm just going to do a bit of an expansion on that. We had that a couple of weeks ago. Then we had a marvelous celebration last weekend, resurrection weekend. Glory to God. It was so good. I'm still excited about it. And so anyway, meditation is one of the greatest keys to obtain understanding and truth. True meditation will give you understanding of God, his ways, and his word. As you begin to meditate the word, notice I said the word. It, I'm not talking about meditating on the ground or on trying to empty your head or any of this. We're meditating on something specific, and that's the word of God. Amen? As you begin to do that, and you will lo- know how to walk in what God is revealing to you. Whatever you can truly imagine on the inside, you can become. It will become a reality on the outside. And let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4. Boy, we're going to finish this today. Glory to God. You know, I, I checked in the Bible. That's not true. I didn't. It's just simply because I haven't seen it anywhere in the Bible that it says I have to be done at 1130. So we might be done at 1130. We might be done at 1230. But that's okay, as long as we're in the Word, as long as we're not in silly stuff and and doctrines and traditions of man, as long as the Holy Spirit has something to say to us, we're ready to receive. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when we got these chairs, they told us they were good for three hours. Now, we haven't gone the three hours. We haven't checked it out, but today might be the day. Because today is the day. Something great's going to happen to us. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. How many sons of God do we have here? Children of God. Well, attend to his words. Incline your, let them, where am I? Incline your ear. So we have to be hearing what he's saying. Now, do you know you have an outer ear and an inner ear? Your spirit man has an ear. So we're not just hearing with the outer ear, we're hearing with our inner ear. Amen? And when you speak yourself, you hear with your inner ear. It sounds different. I don't know. I would, I, when I first heard myself on a CD, because I ch- listened to what I was, had taught and I listened to it, I thought, dear Jesus, is that really what I sound like? I had no idea that's the way I sounded. Wasn't sure I ever wanted to hear it again. I said, you know, it's time to pray for the people. They have to listen to this. Glory to God. But when it's anointed by the Holy Ghost, it doesn't much matter, does it? Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, if Balaam could listen to a donkey, this is a little bit better than that. Amen? (laughs) Glory to God. Anyway, so we're listening to that. Verse 21, let them not depart from your eyes. So we have to keep the word of God in front of our eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So in your eyes, in your ears. Well, in order to keep them in the ears, they have to come out of our mouth. So it's the eyes, the ears, the mouth, and it gets into our heart. Glory to God. And that's faith. There's no faith without speaking. It's your heart and your mouth. For they are life unto those that find them. Life, God's life, Zoe life. Not physical life, but God's life. The abundant life, healing, deliverance, manifestations of the glory. The word gives us that. They are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it it flow the forces or issues of life. Put away from you a froward mind, mouth. Means don't have and speak things contrary to the word of God, and perverse lips, which means twisted lips or twisted speech, put far from you. Let your eyes look right on, and your eyelids straight before them. Just look straight on the word of God. If it isn't good, if it's not pure, if it isn't lovely, don't be looking at it. If you want to walk in that abundant Zoe life, guard what you put in front of your eyes, what comes out of your mouth, and what comes into your ears. Let your eyes look right on. Ponder the path of your feet. If your feet want to take you where they shouldn't be taking you, just slap them and turn them the right way and go the way you know you're supposed to go. But you know your feet won't go anywhere where your mind hasn't gone first. So if your feet want to go the wrong way, you know that you've already thought about it and you've allowed your mind to go there. Your feet are not detached from your mind. 
We go, oh, I, I don't know what happened. I just sort of went there. No, you didn't. You thought about it. You thought about it before you did it. Turn not to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. We had looked at that, and it's incline, attend, hearken, pay attention. Pay attention to what God is saying. And we saw in James chapter 1, there was a progression, and it talked about sin. And you don't sin, and you're not tempted because God doesn't tempt anyone, but you're tempted and drawn away because of your own lust, because of what you want and what you're thinking about. And we saw the reciprocal of that, whereas when the desire of God is conceived, it brings forth faith, and faith, when it's finished, brings forth life. So when we meditate and look at the word of God, it will bring forth life and it will build that desire. Let's go to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. And this is just, just a tad of a review, but that's good. Joshua chapter 1 verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Okay, how do we tread? We tread by speaking. You see, there is the spiritual realm and the natural realm. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says the laws of the spirit of life or the principles of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death, the law of the natural way of going. So I am walking, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, that's where my authority is, and wherever I tread with my words, that's going to be given to me. And it'll be good or bad. Whatever I have meditated on, gotten in my heart, that's what I will have. So we, he'll give it to us. Then we go down to verse 5. There shall not any man... Be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So what's he saying there? The God of this world system, the world's government, Satan, will not be able to stand before me all the days of my life. Will not be able to stand before you all the days of your life. If you do what God's, we're going to read, what we're supposed to do. You see, we read that sometimes, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life, and we think, well, that was Joshua, and yeah, you read about Joshua and all these kings, he got rid of them and he put his foot on his neck. It says that Jesus, the seed of the woman, will put, bruise your head, basically put his foot on your neck. They did that all the time in the Old Testament when they conquered a king. And he stripped him of his authority. They didn't let that king continue to run around in his armor. They stripped him. Well, Satan stripped naked. We saw that last weekend. He's running naked. Glory to God. So it's not just these natural kings. It's the God of this world, Satan, will not be able to stand before me all the days of my life. He will not prevail against me. And whatever God's got designed for me, I will have in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus already purchased it for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now let's look at verse 6. In order for every place for the sole of my foot to tread, I'll get in order for no man to stand before me all the days of my life, Satan's worldly system, I must be strong and of good courage. Yeah. And somebody that has good courage is not somebody that's going to compromise. Amen. And that takes courage. It takes strength. It takes a sound mind. It takes somebody, as we heard this morning, somebody that knows their God. Because if you don't know your God, you will not have the strength to stand strong and be courageous. It also refers to being clear-headed. Unless we have the word of God guiding and directing us, we will not be clear-headed. So that's verse 6. That's something we have to do. Don't cave in. Don't compromise. Don't grow weary in well-doing. And faint before you reap the promise, Galatians said. And then, so verse 7, again, it's telling us, be strong. 
God once again is promising us, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Did Jesus not say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you? Did he send the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit within you and does he leave you? No. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So verse 8, and this is really what the teaching is a lot about. But in order to have what verse 3 says and what verse 5 says, we have to be strong and we have to know our God. And verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. And then God goes on another few times telling them to be strong and have good courage. To do what the word of God tells us to do. So people read that and get into all kinds of commands. But Jesus said, the works that I do shall ye do also. And greater works than these shall I do because I go to my Father. So we think, well, that's got to be raising the dead. Well, I'm not saying it isn't. But Jesus said, I only do those things I see my Father do. And I only say those things I hear my Father say. So we are to get in the place of only doing what we see our father do, and only saying what we hear our father say. That's what he will back up. And we get that direction, and we learn that by meditating in the word of God. And there is some things in the word we have to do. We have to forgive. We have to walk in, in, in love towards people. There's things we have to do. But what we do is the same thing here. Do what I've commanded you to do. Do what's written therein. Do, Jesus said that a new heart have I given you. 